welcome back. Let's play... Um, you've probably heard of chess. You've heard of battle chess. Recently on GOG, um, it's this game providing website that provides games uh, without DRM. Um, they offered up a different kind of battle chess. I forget what this is called. I think it's called like Royal Chess or something. I wish I could remember the name. But anyhow, I'm a fan of all these kinds of games. Um, it's on sale, so I purchased this game there, and um, we're going to give it a try. It kicked my butt last time because I played the King's Gambit, but I don't admit to knowing the King's Gambit. So, let's see, can I just play the English opening? Well, that's dramatic. I wonder, do I get to see the moves on the board? Or do I just have to imagine that they moved? We're going to try a new game. Don't want to save this now. We're going to try this again. Alright, so we're doing... And the funny thing is, I had tested this before the stream, just to make sure that there wouldn't be any issues whatsoever. Went through painstaking effort to set this up properly. Um, so, let's try it over here. C2, C4. Nope, nada. Uh, maybe I've got to relaunch the game. Use animated set. Don't use animated set. View board from north. Nope, that didn't do it either. Well, this was a beautiful game. This worked wonderfully just a minute ago. Uh... Huh. Well, this is going to mess up the stream layout, but let's give it a whirl. We're going to go full screen mode, which puts everything in its place, and then we're going to back out of full screen mode. If I can just hit the button to get me out of full screen mode, that would be great. Let's take this over here. There's the button. Okay, so now the pieces appear where they should. Oh, dang it. It moved all my windows around. At least I think the main chest window is where it used to be. Uh, but yeah, everything else got moved around. So, I'm going to try adjusting the layout on the fly. And while I'm at it, maybe I should just make sure that the pieces can move. So what happens if I say I want to move my knight to c3? Okay, we get an animation. We got something going here for us. Um, This looks sloppy, but what can I do at this point? Um, so, move this around, move that around. I have to resize this because otherwise it minimizes the window when I try to drag it. Put this back. And double check that the layout looks fine. Uh, it's okay. It fits all the ranks of the board on the layout, so we can deal with this. Uh, let's play the other knight forward. So, yeah. Maybe I should add that in addition to not knowing the King's Gambit, I wasn't trying especially hard. So, we're going to see if while I'm trying, I can actually have a successful result. But who doesn't like an animated chess set? Um... Bishop b4. Am I supposed to do queen c2 against this, or d4? Or a3? Um, I, th I have a feeling I'm not supposed to do a3. Because then black gets in an easy d5 with equality. Um, knight d5 might be okay. 
I'm not sure if it loses material, but I want to know. So we're going to look at it. Plus, it's awesome to see the pieces jumping around. Oh, right. Um, that's a bit of a challenge. So, do I take the bishop, or do I run? I could go to e5 here. Oh, e5. He's going to play knight e5 no matter what. Unless, say, I take the bishop, then take the knight, and he takes my knight and takes my pawn, I take his pawn. He's still got control of the half-open d-file. Um, wait, but if I move my knight, he's got to do knight takes knight, pawn takes, and then knight e5. And I still don't get to castle. Uh, I could do knight takes knight to preempt knight takes knight. Um, but if I trade there, he gets his queen out, and I lose control of the center. Um, this is just a bad deal for me. I'm thinking the best way to get out of this at this point is to just go forward and trade some pieces. Um, we'll see just how good or bad this idea is. Oh wow. What was that? Uh, okay. That was an unexpected reply. Because here I could play knight e5. Well, I guess he's got queen e7. I'm not so sure what's going on here. I want to find out. I'm more interested in finding out what happens than I am in actually attempting to win the game. Um, pretty much the story of, at least in recent months of my chess career, that I just care what's going on in the game. I don't really care if I win it. Winning would be nice, cause, I mean, who doesn't like winning? But I don't think... Um, I think more important here is, am I doing well or am I doing poorly? I suppose to get some kind of idea, I could, like, read the computer evaluation and see what it's predicting. And that would tell me if I'm sucking or not. Um, so, he's intending rookie 8, among other things. Inevitably, I will want to play a3 and then b4 and get my bishop out. Um... So, I am doing that here. Oh, is my knight short on squares? That's not good. At least I'm not trapped. It would suck if I were trapped. It's good that they include the 2D board so I could see where my cursor is. It's a really nice touch. Um, see, wait, wait, wait. We're not moving the knight. We're going to move the bishop so the knight has a square to retreat to. I mean, yeah, I could move the knight to g4 and he plays d5 and that's all playable. Um, but why not throw in bishop e2 first? Uh, I guess bishop e2 does not help my situation. It kind of ensures a bishop trade, which I don't want to trade. Yeah, that's what I get for moving quickly. Serves me right. <laughs> it's kind of funny how uh, your opponent's pieces can fidget. Alright, so my knight's trapped, so I gotta move it back. And then we exchange the house on g4. And uh, my remaining bishop is not so good, to put it mildly. Huh. It's predicting a queen g5 and then f... Oh, well... I'm, now I'm trying to think through, is f3 really a good move? I don't like it. Well, 
What's so wrong about Bishop H3, I wonder? Doing, 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 doing. Ouch. Well, that's gotta hurt. It's like a gymnastics routine there. Except when he jumps on top of you, um, you just disappear. Now that looks cool. Oh man, we're gonna see a bishop versus bishop fight here. Oh wait, it's predicting queen g5 here. Yeah, I was just gonna say, if he does queen g5 here, I'm gonna take on c8. I'm not gonna play f3. F3 is for people who don't care about king safety. Which, um, I know sometimes I fall in that category for the sake of making an interesting game. But, um, there's no reason to be silly against a computer. Computers don't get upset when you play confusing moves. At least I don't think they do. So yeah, computer's absolutely right. Oh. Oh wow. I did not see it taking on e2. I just figured it would recapture. Well, that's what I get for not reading ahead. So yeah. Once it takes g2, uh, if I play rook f1, it takes my bishop and it's won two pawns, because I can't save the h-pawn either. So it's better for me to lose the exchange. Um, so yeah, you can see that it definitely outcalculated me here. Man. I miss playing against, like, Chess Master. Those were the days. So yeah, I have to let the rook go, or at least let the go the exchange. So I get a bishop, oh, I guess no pawns. So even though I'm taking this and attacking stuff, am I really getting a pawn out of this? I don't think so. It did take on g2. Wow, I am... It's amazing that I have as many resources as I do here. On the other hand, it's amazing that this attack came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I see him a check. I'm... S yeah. Yep. Yeah. Gotta move the king. But I'm forking the rook and the knight. And the knight can't defend the rook, and the rook can't defend the knight. There is queen f3 check for perpetual check, but... It's not going to prefer that, because it thinks it's winning. And by all means, it just took my rook, so who is it to argue um, that it's wrong? As a human, I'd probably wimp out with the perpetual check with queen h1 to f3 to h1. But as a computer, and it's got those nerves of steel, it's going to play this out. I don't like for black. Well, let's see this fight. Ooh, that hurts. Oh, you're gonna get it now. Yeah, no, I see him in check. Yeah, you, you're just tempting fate there, because you're gonzo in just a minute. should have done that earlier. I mean, yeah, if he had that power to just vaporize the queen, why not do it when they were when he was in check last time? But yeah, I've lost an exchange. Um, but I'm forking the rook and the knight. So, I think the knight moves and then I gain the exchange back. And I just have an unfavorable position. Yeah, and if you moved the knight somewhere other than c5, maybe I would just take e4 and play down the exchange for a pawn. Um, and see if the bishop pair and this 
interesting pawn mess could do something. But no, we're taking that rook. That rook's going down. Yeah, as the computer points out, I have to play king c2 to stop knight b3. And even if it did play something like rook b8, I could play b4 and the knight still can't go to b3. Um, I guess the downside of king c2 is that my f-pawn's loose. Oh, but no, if knight d3, then just f4. So yeah, I'm doing okay. Hanging in there admirably well for a meat bag. I wonder what engine they're using. And whether um, it could be replaced with something far more powerful. <laughs> That'd be fun. Oh, there it is, knight d3. And as predicted, I'm going to play f4, because otherwise I lose my pawn. Uh, key point is that if he takes en passant, then I take his knight. If he takes my bishop, I take the knight, and I'm not losing my pawn, because en passant only applies on the subsequent move. D5. Now, do I want to play B3 as it's suggesting, or do I want to just take on D5? If I take, I'm not seeing the problem. Well, I guess that just gives him the file. Um, I mean, usually he who captures first loses ground, so usually taking would be ill-advised. Uh, in this particular situation, taking would lead to rook d8, and they probably do rook takes d5, rook h5, and then take my h-pawn. So I need to spend a little time and develop my stuff so I don't drop my h-pawn, right? Because if I take rook d8, b3, rook takes pawn, bishop b2, rook h5, and then rook h1. Uh, I make it in time, but then he's got knight f2 and my rook's trapped, and if I hit the knight, then he goes, rook takes pawn defending the knight. So yeah, I don't actually have time to take on d5. I have to play the computer-recommended move. Um, I do wish there were some way I could um, get that computer recommend. Well, yeah. It'd be a huge pain in the butt, but it'd be cool if I could get that uh, computer analysis to show up so you guys would see it, but I would not. Um, but that would take a lot of setup on my part, and I'm not sure if it would even work. Uh, if you saw this earlier, I had to fidget with the board dimensions and window dimensions and everything, because uh, none of the pieces were moving. Oh, that's how it's going to stop me from developing. I was wondering, can't I just play bishop b2 next, and then bishop c3, and everything's fine? No, it plays rook b8, and that slows down my development. Yeah, I mean, it's great that you can see it, but the problem is I can see it too. So people could just say, oh, well, Dan's just playing the computer moves. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little tired, and I am a little bit copying, but that's not my entire plan. Um, wait, a4 loses a pawn, right? Um, I find it funny that computer analysis ends with c5 check, where c5 is anything but check. But no... Uh, A4, I'm pretty sure, loses a pawn, because his knight will take at some point on C1. 
and then it'll play rook b4, and I can't defend both pawns at the same time. Yeah, maybe I could get an active rook, but it's not worth it. Uh, let's count pawns. How am I doing on pawns? I mean, I've got a backward pawn, but materials even. So I could seriously consider rook b1 here. Um, I mean, how else is the rook going to get developed? a4 basically loses a pawn. Rook b1 means I've got... Uh, I can't defend the h-pawn. But I get an active king. So what I'm looking at is like rook b1, rook takes rook, king takes rook, knight, a, knight f2, uh, king c2, knight g4, king c3, knight takes pawn, king d4, and my king just runs up the queen side. Um, of course the computer's not going to let that happen verbatim, so like after king takes rook on b1, um, we're looking at maybe knight f2, I don't know, but... Maybe knight f2, king c2, um, knight g4, and then king c3, king f8. And his king's going to try to shoulder my king out. And he could always play f5 to defend the e-pawn. It's really an uphill battle for me to try to get anything on the queen side. Unless we were to start with me taking, like, king takes rook on b1. Um, and then he plays f5 and king f7 right away. In which case, he just has the better end of it. But it doesn't mean I can't fight. But yeah, a4, as far as I'm concerned, loses a pawn. Uh, I'm pretty sure it does. And even if I can get an active rook, it, I'd surprise, be really surprised if it's worth it. Um... I think my king rampages just as fast as his knight does. However, his knight doesn't immediately go rampaging. He instead interjects f5 and king f7 and gets his king out, protects his queen side, and makes it really difficult for my bishop to go anywhere. And I have the end game where the bishop can't really be of any use. Um... Because all my pawns, except the c-pawn, are on dark squares. And that means that when his pawns move forward onto light squares, my bishop can't attack anything. So, yeah, I guess a4 does basically give him either a pawn or some tempi. But my bishop is so hemmed in that I have little choice. Uh, another option would be rook a2, intending bishop b2. It seems really clunky, because he's got, like, rook b6, rook h6. Um, and it is clunky, because my rook can't get out after that. Yeah, the knight is just totally dominating the bishop, so I have to play, uh, this a4 stuff. I have to release my rook. And it's just going to be a terrible endgame. Thankfully, I can still get my king active and in the center fairly quickly. So it's not completely lost. But, yeah, this... Very likely, white is not going to be able to save this. Or, let me put it this way. Very likely, white is going to fail to save it. Regardless of what technically might be possible. Um, but yeah, we have to go with the computer recommendation here, which is just develop the king. Make some kind of pseudo threat on the rook, as well as a threat to advance toward the e-pawn. What got me so hung up on this earlier was the idea that uh, he could keep the rook on b4, as well as take on c1. And I considered an alternative move order, where he d he takes on c1 first, and then plays rook b4. Which I thought was convincing. Apparently the computer is not convinced by it. Um, but yeah. 
I think I see tactically why not now, but it's a bit much to go into for most viewers. Um, A5 does protect my pawn. I wonder what's up such that bishop... Oh, bishop a3, he just takes the a-pawn. I was wondering what's up such that that wasn't working. You can tell where I'm at right now. Um, so yeah, a5 will protect my pawn. Um, it does put another pawn on a dark square, but who cares at this point. That ship has sailed, so let's go. Now if he takes on c1, I can take back and not immediately lose the a1. But yeah, all my pieces are bottled in, or hemmed in, or bottled up. Hemmed up. Got all the variations there. Um, yeah, I've been saying for a while now that f5 is going to happen sooner or later, and this position is just going to suck for white. Oh, wow. Um... Well, that endgame that it's suggesting, you see the principal variation it's recommending is f5. Bishop a3, rook a4 to pin the bishop. King b3 to kick the rook. Rook takes pawn. Bishop b2. Rook takes rook. And I'm gonna say after that, bishop takes rook, because you want to keep the bishop. As much as the endgame is awful, um... Your chances lie with having some pieces on the board and trading off all the pawns. Um, and really, bishop a3 is the only way that a bishop's going to develop at this point, so there's no alternative. Um, I could push a6, but it doesn't do anything. Uh, so bishop a3 is kind of forced. What confuses me here is that after rook a4, can't I just play um, bishop b2 and not lose the a-pawn? Where's the tactical flaw there? Oh, bishop b2... Interesting. Yeah, rook a4, bishop b2, knight takes bishop, protects his rook, but then I could do king takes knight, protecting my rook. And should we exchange rooks there? Um, I'm not sure if that's lost. Oh, hey, look, that's what it's recommending. It seems like rook b1 would improve over all this. Yeah, rook b1 at some point in this game would have been an improvement. But. This doesn't look hopeless. Yes, yeah, so this is the thing I was just referring to. Was can't I just play my bishop back to b2? I don't see what's so terrible about that. That's kind of funny, the line the computer recommends there, where it gets its knight trapped. Um, it's way fancier than what I was thinking about, which is... My line, my king ends up on a1, and it just is kind of painful. I'm pretty sure that... Um, actually, my king is shut out. That's incredible. So... Basically, what would happen would be his king would make it to take my h-pawn. Um, and or make threats to my d-pawn. Like, if everything liquidated, all those my, um, bishop, knight, and both rooks, and my king were on a1, I think king f7, just chasing down the h-pawn, wins on the spot. Um, because it takes my king six moves to defend that, and it takes his... How many to attack it? It'd be king g8, f7, he's already moved. It takes me six to defend, so I'm in b1, c1, d1... E1, F1. Yeah, so his king would take my h-pawn before I'd have any chance to get it. Um, so what that means... 
And the funny thing about that is, on A1, I wouldn't have any counterplay, because even if I get my king to A4... Well, I mean, he could do king F7, I could do A6, and he just goes after my A1, I guess. But, as to say, even if I got my king to A4, he could just play A6, and my king's only way out is via G3 or H3, because his pawns make this nice, incredible phalanx. Um, so... What that all boils down to is that I can't exchange all the minor pieces because uh, the pure king and pawn endgames with my king and a1 are immediately lost. Like, without any calculation. Or with very minimal calculation. All forced moves. So... I still think, I still have some faith in this bishop b2 move. Um, for the reason the computer's recommending, this silly night trap thing. Plus, I'm not keen on losing my a-pawn for nothing. Uh, this is my bid for activity. Gotta give the computer a thing or two to think about. Um. Oh, okay, he's attacking my bishop. I was gonna say, knight to c1 was not a move that was on my radar. Not even close. Um. Let's see, I've got to exchange down here. And note that after my king goes to b3, trapping his knight, uh, knight b6 would be pretty bad, I think, because my king would just go after the b-pawn, and I'd be on the offensive side of that. Um, so even though it would win a pawn in the short term, about three or four turns later, I would be attacking. And it's not like he's got a pawn break on the king's side. Um, our pawns in the center and king's side are, are just perfectly balanced out, such that there's no pawn break here. But yeah, for those curious what this game is, uh, again, I purchased this on GOG uh, just today. They're having a fun uh, game sale, and I got this for like a dollar or something. Um, I had to get it. I understand it's no battle chess, but, you know, it's still pretty great in its own way. Alright, so let's take the knight and see where do we go next. Yeah, I think a6, as it's suggesting, is forced. I'm not sure when this one was published. Um, if you want, I, in fact, why don't I go look that up, as well as the actual title of the game. Because the window title says chess, and that's kind of uninspiring. That's kind of sad marketing on the part of the people who developed the game. So let me get the actual game name. Alright, is it my turn yet? It's not my turn yet. Okay, where did I put my receipt for... Oh, he's almost finished moving. Great. Um, and I'm wondering, should I go to... Uh, I'm struggling with this one. I'm pretty sure... I mean... Computer's saying a plus two evaluation. Oh, 
In fact, it's just calculating the thing I was thinking about. Um, and yeah, it doesn't matter whether I pick C2 or C3, because it's going to take me en passant either way. Um, so we're going to go to C2, as it suggests. Alright, now where's my receipt for this game? This game goes by the name Combat Chess. So this is called Combat Chess. Yeah. Voice recognition isn't what it could be. Oh, it moved. Great. Um, huh. you can get this on eBay for 40 bucks, or you can get it on GOG for like $1. Um, oh, 97. 1997. Yes, yeah, so as I was saying, my best try here is D2, D4, because otherwise I'm just losing the H pawn without a fight. So, might as well play this out. And if it weren't for that pesky en passant rule, White would totally be winning this. Maybe. Uh, on account of White having two connected past pawns. Um, they just... <laughs> Sadly, en passant is a rule. And so White must lose. Assuming black finds it. I wonder, how do you animate this? Okay. That's apparently how you do the animation. But note over here! Look what's happened! I have an extra pawn! Let's do <laughs> Yeah, it's not actually there, is it? Is it? How great would it be if that pawn were still there? Would I be winning this, or would I be winning this? Oh. Oh. Oh, that's fantastic. Yup. Guess who's a winner? Uh. Well, isn't... That a handy little glitch. You saw it here first, folks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, that's the computer on its hardest level. And it's also configured not to blunder. Like, you can configure all sorts of things to make it really strong, and I've got it cranked up the entire way. And I have this not checked. So the computer makes no mistakes, and it's playing at full strength, and it's not like I'm giving extra CPU power to the animation or anything, so... Yeah, I just beat it at its highest difficulty um, accidentally. So that's great. That's pretty fantastic. Okay, but no, seriously, how do you win this? Um... Uh, I understand that d5 and I have a superior endgame, or d takes c5 and I'm still superior, but actually winning this, I mean, why would you pick e4? e4, you got f takes e4 is a problem because some pawns get liquidated. I mean, sure, you got the past c pawn. Oh, it's still enough to tie down Black's King. But yeah, my first inclination here is just either push d5, getting a permanent passed pawn, or take on c5. And keep in mind, I'm up a pawn thanks to that silly en passant glitch. Um, yeah, I think taking on c5 is the cleanest way to do this. Take c5, king f6, king d4, king e6. Oh, that's the problem. The problem is that his king um, kind of shuts down my king there. So e4 is more accurate, because it gives my king inroads into the position. 
Guys, we better hope that when I promote the pawn that I actually get the piece I promote to. Otherwise, um, it's going to be a sad day. It's going to be a sad, sad day. But yeah, this is combat chess. And if you ever want to beat it, uh, just set up a position where en passant's the only winning move. And just watch as everything goes to crap. Oh, hey, look! He resigns. But we want to see how this animates, right? You guys really want to see this animate, I'm sure. So let's force it to play out. I do not accept your resignation. Uh, Alright, so yeah, we gotta push E5 check to uh, give our elves a way into this position. Now this past E pawn anchors the king within the box, basically. So you see the E pawn here. King is kind of stuck in this E5, B5, E8, uh, B8 box. Um, meaning it's not going to make any more threats over here anymore. And um, once I take on C5, this is going to be pretty nice. I would be tempted to push d5 and make it all look geometric and stuff, but um, my king has no way in at that point. Thanks to these a pawns. If these a pawns weren't here. Pushing d5 could be useful. Um, and then you like zugzwang the pawns over here until he has to sack them, and then you zugzwang get your. Oh wait, no. Then you'd have king a6, king b6. Um, so no, Zugzwang wouldn't cut it there either. But yeah, just taking on c5 is crushing. Oh, I'm sad. Okay. Well. That's a thing. You know, maybe I should have accepted the resignation. Hindsight is twenty twenty, eh? Well, I guess that's perhaps why it was on sale for a dollar. But still, it was a great experience for a dollar. Um, let's see if I can get that fired back up. Um, one second. Alright. Combat chess, go! Okay, display capture back on. I mean, isn't this a great intro sequence? That's pretty fantastic how we tricked the engine. They had no idea that that 2D pawn uh, was not actually on the board. Oh. oh, yeah, I guess that could count as a victory of sorts. Hey look, we get all our windows back. Nowhere near where we initially put them. But that's okay, because the game crashed. It has no idea what was going on before it crashed. So I need to put things back where they were. Let's put this back here-ish. Put the move list. Well, I gotta, in order to be able to drag that, I have to widen it. Because otherwise it's gonna minimize when I try to drag. Let's put that back. And for good luck, we'll just size it like that. We have the engine thinking window over here. Let's see, does that overlay nicely? Almost. And then got to double check that the screen capture is in the right place. Um, I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah, that looks fine. You can see all the columns of this board, so... Alright, well that's what happens when you play the English. Should we give it the bird? We're gonna give it the bird. There's the bird. F2, F4. Okay. 
Um, I'm gonna play e3. And I don't know, this is still pretty cool, right? And now we stonewall it up. Pretty sure it's gonna follow with f5, but you never know. Yeah, why don't you, like, cough when it's not your turn, or... I don't know. There's no reason to be impatient while it's your turn, buddy. Man, that was great. I was so winning that. And that's why you have to study your end games. That very specific situation has required like decades of in-game practice. Um, but yeah, it is kind of funny that I jinxed it like that, saying, you know, if that Ampasant move weren't there, White would totally be winning this. And then attempted the Ampasant move, and um, got an even worse form of the endgame. Alright, so deal in this position is that you don't want to give up control of the e4 square. So you want to just like get your bishop controlling e4, get your knight controlling e4. It's not such a big deal if he pins your knight with bishop g4. Um, still kind of funny that he's castling into it. Maybe the computer's never seen the stone wall before. Well, there's the first time for everything. Or maybe its opening book had bad advice. Um, I mean, this is fine for black. This is not losing or anything, but... I would not prefer this, because it's just so much easier to play the white side of this. Okay, I'm trying to remember if... I, I think I just play knight f3 here. Or rather, knight gf3. There's no need to do anything fancy with, say, playing h3 to prepare or anything. So now I control both e4 and e5. And sure, he could play bishop f5, and I could be kind of sad there, but... I don't know, even after bishop f5, I've still got castle and queen e1. So I'm still able to keep going forward. Knight e5 is still a possibility. This is still quite strong. a5 is, in my opinion, a completely wasted move. So let's just castle and get on with it. Maybe I'll have a legit victory this time. It's funny how the king's the one who teleports there. I guess the king can't normally go two spaces. That makes some sense. But when you castle, the king's the one who moved first, right? At least under recent chess rules. That's the big deal. Maybe in 97 this wasn't such a big deal, but you have to move the king first. Alright, so against c5 you just play c3. And your bishop's not trapped. Nothing to worry about there. Now could play bishop f5. Although, you might have to interject some other moves first. Usually in the stone wall, if black plays C takes D4, you just play E takes D4 and you got a nice open center. Um, then again, what am I talking about? Usually black doesn't bother with like C5 and C takes D4 in this opening. Um, Maybe he's trying to discourage me from playing e4 just by mounting threats on my d-pawn. Um, and now I'm seeing kind of the point of a5. So 
I can't exactly take c5 and play b4 to hold the pawn. <gasps> Not that that's what I should even be attempting to do. Um, so, usually white plays like knight e5, um, queen e1, and some fun stuff. I'm considering delaying knight e5, because I'm not seeing the point. Um, yeah, I'm just not understanding that here. Queen e1 seems a lot more apt here for whatever reason. I mean, I know I want to push the e-pawn as quickly as possible. And I know he can't push, he can't afford to push e5 yet. Um, the only thing he could do that could really mess me up would be bishop f5. But that messes up his king's uh, pawn safety or pawn structure. So... What now? I mean, knight e5 is usually terrifying for black in some respect, because the king's side is... I don't know, white can advance his pawns on the king's side. Um, yeah, queen e1 just seems too slow, I guess. I've got to keep up the pressure with the normal move. Computer's not telling me what it's thinking anymore. It just says thinking. I could probably reconfigure that for you. Maybe after it moves again, we'll have it start spouting out what it's thinking. Or do you guys prefer it this way, where I'm telling you what's going on? Yeah, this seems more like what would happen in a real game. Yeah, Queen C7? I don't know. I'm thinking you're too optimistic there. Here, let's see. Strength. Show engine thinking. There we go. So, I don't know what it's planning to do with that bishop. But it's still trying to delay me from playing g4 or e4. Um, I'm still thinking that queen e1 and maybe even queen h4 is appropriate here. I just have a small, solid space advantage. Um, it's just going to be disruptive to him as long as he just doesn't mount any scary threats. So, computer prefers its position here. I don't know if, how long it's going to stay um, with that opinion. It's really thinking that I'm impatient to get the attack going, and that's not the case. I'll take as many turns as it takes for me to go crush your king. Um. So, I don't know if I throw queen h4 in right away, or do I interject king h1... Or do I push... I mean, queen h4 seems to threaten an immediate g4. Almost. Not quite. h3 and king h... Well, no, king h2 would put the king in a bad square, but... h3 and g4 seems interesting. I'm still not seeing what it's threatening. And I'm debating, do I put my queen on h4 and then push h3 and g4? Or do I leave my queen back home where it defends uh, e3 and could maybe attack um, e4? I'm thinking I do that. I'll just leave the queen on e1 for a minute. I don't know. Computer's not sure to how to resolve this tension. And so I just have to keep increasing the tension. 
Um, I think sooner or later H3 is going to be a thing, so let's do it now. And the usual stuff that'd be scary in a Queen's Gambit with like Rook C8 um, and trying to open the C file or just in general trying to open the Queen side, it's just not scaring White at all here because White owns the center. So, there's nothing black can do to break through on the queen side. Okay, this queen h4 idea is starting to occur to the computer. So I have to start to pretend to maybe get a move on. Um, but I don't know, g4 looks fun. g4 could maybe... He happened before queen h4. Does stop bishop f5, which I've been concerned about for a, quite some time. I'm not seeing the downside, other than it just looks scary. I mean, there's g4 h5, and we get an interesting game. So what's the downside of having an interesting game? Let's find out. Wait, how many pieces have we exchanged this game? Nothing has yet been exchanged. Um, that was hilarious. For an instant, it was suggesting that it's seriously considering knight takes knight here. Knight takes knight, and then I just do d pawn takes knight. And um, white has kind of a huge attack. Like, an immeasurably huge attack. Okay, so... Bishop c8. Can anybody explain that move to me? Can anyone... Well, I guess I uh, was kind of threatening f4. So it does kind of, like, take the wind out of my stales um, to do that, but... Yeah, now I'm just pretty sure... I'm gonna just attack at my leisure. It's not like the computer's doing anything. So... I don't know. King h1... Queen g3... There's a lot of options here. As long as I don't give up the e4 square, I'm doing fine. Um... Yeah, let's... I don't know. I'm so confused. This is too easy. I was expecting more of a fight. What if I do queen h4, king f2, and then... I mean, that could be fun. It's like I'm no longer intending e4 because that would just open everything up. Um, still, h4 seems wrong. G3 seems preferable to H4, because I still want my pawns to move in front of my queen. Um, ultimately... Ultimately... What's going to break open the king's side is, I don't know, maybe H5? Um, so for that to be a reality, my queen can't be on the H file. Um... It's kind of a ways away, but... Yeah. I think Queen G3 is probably the right way to advance here. <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny. This is kind of harkening back to early chess engine days. And I know this is a 97 game. But by early, I meant, like, even before then. Because I'm trying to remember, by, like, Windows 98, Microsoft had an OK chess engine. Probably, I don't remember. I don't think they bothered improving it for quite some time. These days, it can actually compete. But I forget when it got competitive. But yeah, um, back in the day, 
the early, early days of computer chess competition, they would just be awful at seeing long-term plans. Um, so, I'm kind of surprised that the line it's recommending doesn't make any mention of trying to exchange bishops. Um, I mean, clearly the veiled threat here is bishop a6, and then I can't avoid a trade. So I have to, like, lift the rook and, or play bishop c2 first. But c2's not a good square. Bishop b1 might be worth considering. Probably not. Probably should just lift the rook instead to f2 and h2. Um, just so I have some options. Also possible is just king f2, saying, you know what? Well played. You've secured a bishop exchange. But I don't want to go there. I think my attack is way faster, so I'm going to try to keep the bishops on. Uh, actually, tactically, that's a big problem. Because if my bishop goes back to b1, the rook no longer defends c1. Which means this bishop will have to move somewhere. Which means I'll have to move the knight. And after having moved the knight, I have, have to give up the e4 square. So, I guess that's why it's recommending I have to play g5 right away. So that I don't lose the e4 square. That's annoying. Um, could I play rook f2 and then if d t or c takes, maybe e takes? I know that really risks a lot with this attack, but I think it could hold, maybe? Uh, we're we're going to have to find out. Usually white can just leave the c-file open, but here that doesn't seem to be as much of an option. So I'm just going to lift the rook and see where the wind takes us. <clears throat> he says on his move. Ever so impatiently. Yeah, so here it's thinking, oh yeah, of course, he's just going to trade bishops once I play bishop a6. Like I was saying, that's what I was kind of planning to do, is just say I'm going to get the e4 square, and this is the way I'm going to go get it. But problem for uh, black, I think, is that I just go back. And unless tactically I've really missed something, white's doing fine here. Um... Gosh darn it. I calculated everything. And I missed some really subtle tactics. I'm really ticked about that. I now see it. There's two subtle things going on here. One that after his knight... So, you see how there was this pawn on c5 and a knight on c6 and this other pawn on c3? But once all three of those pieces are not on the file anymore, then the bishop's attacked. But, the intermezzo here, knight takes knight, which might have been able to save me here, results in knight takes knight, pawn takes pawn, attacking the rook, and then if I try another intermezzo to save a pawn, knight takes pawn, this queen takes, and he's defending the pawn. And even if I pin the pawn to the queen, you would think, surely this would get the material back. But it fails for two reasons. One, that the rook can't go there. And two, that even if it were to go there, he'd have pawn takes knight, threatening pawn takes bishop, promoting with checks, so that would justify the loss of the queen. Where's the take back button? I'm ticked. Okay. 
So we're going to pretend that I saw that. Um, but this makes my rook f2 ineffective. Um, <sighs> sigh. Sigh, sigh, sigh. Well, I have to take. I don't think there's any way around it. But this means my attack is really slowed down. And that rook f2 was mm, second best. First best would have been getting the king off the first rank so I could connect the rooks and move the other rook over to the h-file in, in a timely manner. Uh, well played, combat chess. Well played. It keeps thinking I'm going to play g5 here, though, and I don't need to immediately do that. Um, I could still play h4 and rook h2 and all that. But, yeah, it kind of takes some of the wind out of my sails, just that... Well, it's useful to play g5 here now, because that would allow me to move my knight to f3, um, unafraid of knight e4. An immediate knight e4 would be ill-advised because there's no way to defend the e4 pawn, I don't think. So, I'm going to play the computer-recommended move and watch as it suddenly changes its mind and says, oh yeah, I'm going to play knight e4 here. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Um, Okay. Coward, come back here and fight! Or run away and tell the rest of your guys to just, like, give up. One or the other. It's running away but saying I'm not giving up is kind of cheesy. Alright, so it's suggesting queen f3. Not sure why. Well, it does hit the d-pawn. Put some pressure on black. Kind of, sort of, forces e6, because uh, alternative is queen d6. Oh, which walks right into a pin. Well, that's convenient. So yeah, queen f3 gains a tempo, because my, now my queen's no longer going to h4. Um, it's going to h5. So, in the name of gaining a tempo, we'll play this. I get that in, and it gets to play the comparably less favorable move, e6. So, I'm achieving more with this repositioning than it's achieving with this e6 move. e6 actually kind of makes it more difficult for it to um, play, well, just anything, really. E6 is pretty weakening. By anything, I mean either F6 or F5 or H6 or H5. They're all weaker now. Because now there's no longer that pawn supporting the F6 square. It's enough to make me seriously consider and then reject um, playing uh, Knight G4. Unfortunately, his knight on e8 is just good enough to keep my knight off of f6, so I have to uh, give up on that idea. Wait. So it's suggesting that I play e4, c takes, and then queen d... Oh, c takes d4. And then queen d3. Hitting the rook. And then c takes d4, and then d takes e4. I don't really want to do that. As fun as it would be to liquidate the center, um, I'm more interested in pushing this guy. I wonder when it's going to see that this pawn could maybe, perhaps, possibly be menacing. Uh, we gotta push it and to find out. Alright, so have I flubbed this tactically? Because it's saying that now it's ahead by a half a pawn. Um, 
I'm not understanding why. I mean, maybe it's just over-optimistic about my trapped pieces in the corner. By the corner, I mean A1, C1. Um, not saying I could exchange on C6 if I wanted to. Or I could take on F6, which I don't want to do. Um, but why don't I just go back to G4? Is E5 really a threat? I'm not seeing E5 as a threat. So, back we go. And by back, I mean toward the king, in a sense, because, well, I mean, I'm hitting F6 now. Used to be hitting G6, but, eh, whatever. Thankfully, Ampassant's still a rule, so if it plays h5, I can take on h6. Um, we'll see how that goes, should it ever come time to play that. Uh, rook a8's kind of a fun move. Now, I know it's suggesting queen h3. I think it's overvaluing the value of the queen on that square. Although, it's saying that it's kind of forced to play f5 in response. If I do get to see f5, um, that's a good position for me. Still, why not uh, rook h2 instead of uh, queen h3? Rook h2 looks like the way to go. I don't think I'm going to mate on the spot, so... Yeah, I think the more patient move will work here. We'll find out. Maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah, so I guess it just didn't seriously look at this move, because this is slower. Um, at least slower in getting my queen over there. Now it's saying queen e2. Well, what's the point? It's not seriously considering taking on d4, and then sacking the knight on d4. Um, oh, I see. Now I can't push my h-pawn because the pin. So I do have to move my queen somewhere. Well, I think that's true. h5, fg5, queen h3. Um, not the sort of thing I want to defend as black, but it might be tenable. Maybe. Still, queen h3 looks strong. Why would I go to e2 when I've got h3 available? e2 could maybe let me threaten things on the queen side, but I'm not seeing much there. Yeah, I'm just going to go to h3. ba -ding. That's a nice little noise for the queen move. I mean, yeah, I saw this possibility of f5. I just think it favors me. So, play it. And then I could follow with um, bringing my knight, uh, well, my first knight to e5. Like my g knight could go to e5. We exchange some stuff off, and then my other knight goes to f3, and who knows where from there, but 
I do eventually get to unwind. Okay, so it's forcing me to make a decision. Ordinarily, I would just play um, E takes. But now I'm kind of supporting a kingside attack, and having the C file open isn't so scary. Uh, e takes. Computer's okay with E takes. Oh, wait, but that drops a pawn. Well, we're going to learn the hard way. What's so bad about uh, C takes here? There we go. i like, didn't I click that? Yes, I did. I could even play knight f1 and bishop d2 and stuff, so I'm not so afraid. I don't know if I should be. I don't think so. Yeah, this is not the most successful stonewall ever. There's a lot to be desired for white. Um, mostly because I played uh, rook h2 instead of queen h3, and I didn't see the pin. Uh, it's a lot easier to see on an actual 3D set than with these fun animated pieces. But, whatever. This is just a game. Oh, you're going to exchange the bishop? You sure about that? I mean, I know my bishop's awful, but I think your bishop has a lot of potential. Yeah, Knight Takes Knight makes more sense. So I never had a position where I could play my one knight to, uh, to f3 and my other knight to e5. I just never had that opportunity to have the knights supporting each other, so I'm forced to take back with a pawn. Um, this is looking ugly. I'm thinking F takes is probably the way to go. And the sad reason I'm thinking that is because of tactics with his queen so far into my position. Um, oof, it's messy. Well, 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 well. I don't know, D takes brings another piece toward that side of the board. Either way, my E pawn's a backward pawn. Um, I'd really like to plant my knight on F4, but I'm realizing that's probably not going to happen this game. And so opening the F file could be kind of a strategic error. It's thinking D takes. I'm really confused. Do I want D takes? Optically it looks nice, but strategically it's just a mess. I mean, unless F takes is tactically failing, I think I want to do F takes. What's so wrong about F takes? I guess he does get to play, say, bishop h8. Or say he shuffles his pieces and his bishop moves somewhere. He gets to put his knight on h5, and then push f4. So that's kind of what's not so great about that, is that I'm not the only player who can use that square. Um. But I really don't like the idea of his bishop being able to go to c5 and harass my e-pawn. It's kind of not so great. I want to see where f takes goes. Oh, that's got to hurt. It's 
So it's considering queen c2, but I thought I was just going to play knight f1 against that. Let's see, queen d8. b3, it still wants me to play that. wonder why b3. Is my knight useless on f1? Is that the point? Is the point that my bishop develops best when I try to develop it right now. And if I try to delay developing it, it's just never going to get out. Hmm, I don't know. So from f1, my knight is theoretically three squares away from f4. I guess, yeah, I found a route. f1, g3, e2, f4. So I can make it. I'm really confused, then. Um, why is it so insistent that I play b3? I guess that just helps this develop very quickly. So, it's not a bad suggestion. But it just seemed really fixated on that move. Now my bishop can make it outside the pawn chain. But I'm not so sure I want to give up control of f4 immediately. So, yeah, this calls for me to move the knight. Um, so if I don't move the knight, well, it's going to double its rooks and hit c1, and things are going to get messy. Um, in a dang hurry. Um... And while I could take a4, that doesn't help me at all. So, but why knight f3? I guess... Um, I'm not sure. Oh, because I can go to d3 to f4. That's a nice way to go. That's traveling in comfort. Right there. That's a nice little hop. Skipping the jump. But yeah, now I can go to e1 to d3 to f4. And then finally push h5. Um, but on f3, I also support bishop d2 should I want to play it. And if I happen to not be so afraid of pieces landing on c2 and d3 and all these squares on the queen side. Earlier, I had a ton of faith in this kingside attack. I've become a little more pessimistic about it, but... I'm not so sure that that matters. Okay, so... What's the deal here? The deal is that if I don't take on a4, b3 has made my life difficult. I thought I wanted to open that side of the board, and now I'm realizing, you know, that was probably a bad idea. Um, meanwhile, I could play h5. He just moves his bishop back, and I don't really have anything special. I don't want to take on a4, but that being the case, pushing b3 was pretty silly. Um, I guess, I'm not sure I see a po uh, the positive side of pushing b3 anymore. It all looks pretty negative to me. So, I mean, do I take? Yeah, that's a mess. If I take, he just walks into my position. If I don't take, if I just push, like, b4, yeah, my position looks ugly, but there's only one file. There's not so many squares on that file. I want to push and learn just how bad this is. I'm pretty sure it plays a3 here. Uh, 
<laughs> it's gonna try to land both its rooks on my second. And what do I do then? Yeah, I gotta move my bishop. And it makes more sense on d2 than a3, I'll tell you that. I mean, sure, my bishop's behind a pawn mass, but um, I'm still thinking my h5 is eventually going to crash through. And if it spends a turn on queen e7, can't I just play knight e1? And there's no invasion points. Um, it's a little difficult for me to advance, admittedly, but if there's no invasion point... Uh, I've basically got a fortress there. Yeah, I could just play a3 here. Not that I want to do that, but it would seal the position. Um, so, I know it keeps insisting I play h5. I could put it off a little bit longer and get my knight up to f4, which supports the attack better than where it is right now. So let's do that and see what it comes up with. Man, that music is so tense. So, so, so tense. Alright, so it's predicting Queen F1. Looks a little silly to my eyes, but what do I know? I'm just a human. Um, I can spend a tempo on A3. It's not terribly spent. Oh, if I don't push h5 now, it's going to play knight g7. That would be kind of a bummer. Knight g7. So if I play like knight d3, knight g7, knight f4, uh, my attack doesn't look so impressive there anymore. But if I do push h5 immediately, that drops the pawn. It's funny how I could see these long strategic maneuvers and miss the one move uh, pieces hanging stuff. Okay, well, that being said, uh, maybe my knight actually belongs on f3. This is why I should have played d takes e5 earlier, um, even though it was uncomfortable. Because now I can't push h5. I did get the f4 square for my knight, but man, that's quite a price to pay. Well, we're going to play, just continue with the plan. Get that knight on f4. And see if we can improve from there. It's possible we might have a fortress and we might not be able to do anything. Which would kind of be sad. But what else? I mean... Okay, so this, this is kind of why Queen F1 is something that occurred to the computer. Um, just so I get my pieces out of the knot or the pretzel or whatever you want to say they're in. Right. For some time I've been considering A3 just so the computer itself can't play A3. Um, I'm not sure if that's the best use of my position. So it's definitely stopped my kingside attack. But now I can shuffle and go queenside. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do that. So... 
play queen f1 to d1. Nothing's really stopping me from doing that. If I play queen f1 and it plays a3, am I in any trouble? I don't think so. So we're going to shuffle this way. Just say, you know what, that was a great kingside attacking idea. Perhaps going to e2 instead of h3 would have been a better way to facilitate it. Um, and, you know, not all games are decided by an immediate kingside attack. Yeah, I guess queen d7 does stop me from playing b5 myself. Because b5 could have been fun. Now we're just taking all the life out of the position. Um, which makes my job simpler. Fine, I'll play a3. Just forever denying you the possibility of playing it, because you're not playing very ambitiously. So, your bishop can't get through this... Uh, quagmire of pawns. And I can keep shuffling my pieces around, and maybe we can get something going. But, at least for now, we seem to have an impasse. Yep, as predicted, there's knight h5. Um... I'm going to see if I can force you to play um, uh, b5. Because if b5 is happening, then um, it's kind of difficult for you to make progress, isn't it? If your queen can't use b5 anymore, that means you can only go down the c-file. And I can guard all the entry points, and that's the end of that. Suggesting rook c1. Uh, rook c4. And then bishop e1. Why do I want to do it in that order? Well, I guess because, yeah, the bishop on e1 wouldn't protect c1 now, would it? Still, that encourages rook c4. Um, am I in any serious trouble if I play knight f4? I don't think so. So, we're gonna go through with this lifelong dream of playing knight f4. And I'm threatening to play h5. Oh, knight e4 stops h5. Or does it? Does it just make it a pawn sacrifice? Um, regardless, it's kind of a mess to play. Um, but yeah, if it plays knight e4... Oh, it's not going to do that. Let's just say that's in... Well, I'm not sure why I would play it to e4. Um, so... It's trying to... Oh. It's trying to make an Elikin's gun. That's kind of cool. Just because that's the only productive thing it can do here. So it sees that opportunity. Um... Bishop e1 seriously comes to mind. It's really hard to dismiss, just out of hand. It's h5, knight e4. Um, actually, my bishop doesn't have to move, even if he attacks it. I'm not afraid of giving him the bishop versus knight advantage here because that's kind of not an advantage. 
Um, so yeah, finally, I'm just going to push this, and we'll go where the, wherever the wind takes us. Maybe I finally bluffed the computer in thinking, oh, he's never going to push that pawn. I'm sure that's exactly what happened. I've lured the computer into a false sense of complacency. Um, and then, bam! This pawn move comes and he has no idea what to do. It's a masterful strategy on my part. Okay, he's taking the pawn. Now, the fun part here is do I do knight takes or do I maybe hold on to the knight? And do something a little tricky, tricky with rook takes. I mean, all certainly it's knight takes knight, but rook takes knight has some merit to it. It's not completely insane. It's just too slow. Uh, so yeah, I need that rook to defend stuff. Ouch. Okay. G takes, queen takes, rook c2, g6, h6, king h1, bishop g7. All seems reasonable. I don't see any reason to deviate. Alright, we're taking the pawn. I get that it has some small positional advantage here, but pretty sure I'm doing fine. Just as long as I don't move anything, I'm doing okay. The minute I start making aggressive moves here, my position falls apart. Um, it's funny though, the computer is looking at things like Rook F1, just to make sure that they don't work. So it's intending Queen G6, or so it tells me. Maybe it's trying to mislead me into thinking it's going to play something else. But, no. Queen g6 is coming. And I could exchange and things are okay there. Why don't I play king f2? King f2, rook c2, king e2, rook b2, king d3, rook c c2. Um, looks okay. King f1 might be more reasonable. Although, I'm going for aggressive stuff. I don't know where my pieces should be. King f1 might be better than king f2. I think I'm doing okay, though. Let's see. Did I just walk into anything? Tell me, computer. What did I miss? Well, surprisingly, I'm okay. That's fortunate. Like I said, with that bishop... Oh, I'm sorry, with this pawn structure, his bishop on f8 can't get into the position. So... Um, that really makes it easier for humans to figure out what's going on. Um, It's predicting that I'm going to play king e2, rook b2, and then king e1. I'm not sure why king e1. Oh, because if I go forward... Well, no, I'm safe there. I'm safe on d3. You can't bluff me, computer. Although, yeah, you're right, there's no real advantage to d3 over d1. So, why would I pick d3? Just to make things interesting, I suppose. 
Yeah, the problem with King D3 after Rook B2 is it just plays Rook B3 and I have to go back. Although, that's not such a problem. Well, no, it does tempo-wise bite me later, so... Yeah, I have to do King D1. Uh, this is still okay. Just because I've got so much power on the king side, um, can't overwhelm me. You can try, but there's there's no way in. Now what confuses me about rook cc2 is that don't I have queen e8? And am I not attacking two pawns after queen e8? What's the deal? Queen e8 hits both e6 and a4, so... Oh, he can take on g5. That's the point. To say otherwise, that looks like a really strong move. Still, e8, queen g5, queen e6, um, king somewhere, queen d5. Oh, he's got queen g1 to follow. Well, that's annoying. Oh, but yeah, the other disadvantage of king d3 is that my king's pretty exposed up on the front line. Um, so why don't I just play rook g2? Huh. And suggesting I trade into a pure run game. I'm pretty sure that's not a good idea. I've got to make this complicated. Um, and trading down is not the way to do that. Uh, so... Uh, if I could just teleport that d-pawn to f4, I think we need a super strong. But teleportation's not a move yet. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe I do have to trade down. Maybe we'll get another position where Ampassant is the only way that it beats me. I guess that's the master plan, guys. You gotta go for the Ampassant trick. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of forced to trade down. That's so sad. I don't have any other way of getting mobile. This mobility comes at too great a price. Although, if I could put my bishop on f4, I still have a fortress. So, knowing your endgames does have some value. Um, yeah, I have to do bishop takes, because if king takes, I'm pretty sure I'm getting mated. So, bishop takes, protecting again across the second rank. And now my bir bishop has to hurry the crap over to f4. And um, try to secure a draw that way. I'm not sure if I'm in time. It's going to be close. Um, but yeah, the bishop f4 draw only works if the queens get exchanged. If they don't... Oh. Oh. I missed that I'm... As a consequence of freeing my pieces, I'm giving up the G-pawn. And I really don't like that. Whatever. I suppose this is lost. Uh, that's too bad. I'd seen that. I would have done king takes c1. I'm pretty sure 
probably regretted it quickly thereafter, but... Uh, that's really a pity that I'm giving up the G-Pawn. Um, makes it very difficult to have any drawing chances. Now, if I could somehow force a queen trade, this would be a lot safer for white. Um, don't know that that's going to happen. Well, it's suggesting king c2. And king b2. Is my king so terribly placed where it stands? Or is it just that I don't have anything better to do? I'm guessing the latter. Because, yeah, my bishop's decent where it's at. Yeah, c2 does kind of protect the a-pawn, so we'll go that way. What's ultimately going to crack this um, fortress is that h-pawn. Which would require my king to be on the king's side to uh, salvage a draw. Although that might not be possible either. Even if my king makes it over there, my bishop would have to be... I don't know. I'm not sure if a draw could be secured here, just because he's got a passed pawn. If there are no passed pawns, sometimes these end games do offer drawing chances. Um, pretty sure this one does not offer drawing chances. Yeah, King B2 is the best use of uh, my tempo. Because otherwise he plays Queen E4, Queen D3 uh, with gain of tempo. Here, at least, it's ambiguous how I'm choosing to defend and or attack. Yeah. There comes the H1. There's nothing I could have done about it. And if I go bishop d2, he just plays um, queen d1. And my bishop can't go any further. So it's suggesting queen c2, and I just forget about the h-pawn. Practically speaking, that might not be so bad. Though I'm surprised it's not strongly considering h4, h3, queen g2, h2, h1. Um... Okay, there it is. Yeah, it misled me. I allowed myself to be misled. It's okay. We're playing chess today. And game one, um, I beat the computer so badly that it couldn't even bear to look at the game anymore and just abruptly crashed the program. Um... This game, too, it's getting its vengeance. Yeah, there's no stopping that pawn. Though, I still find it funny, the PV, the principal variation it's suggesting, involves F5, F4 for some stupid reason. Um, so, we're going to take the pawn. F5, F4 might be for the purpose of just protecting the E-pawn. But that seems overly cautious. Of course, now it suggests the real thing it was thinking about the whole time, which was just pushing the pawn. Yeah. It's the last time I trust what this engine tells me. It'll tell me it's thinking about one thing. And then on the next turn, it just, oh, it happens to find the better thing. The thing that I said that, well, I said that pawn was going to be unstoppable. Numerous turns before it even started to move. Um, 
But there wasn't anything tactically I could do to, like, slow that down. Or even create counterplay. Um, so, let's play it out. We're this far already. Might as well take it to a conclusion. Uh, do I want to go c6 or d7? Probably doesn't matter. c6 attacks two pawns. Let's pick c6. There we are, f4 and then h2. And I can play f5. Huh. Huh. Yeah, so... Um, I'm trying to think... Oh, so I forgot to mention the name of this game to those just joining us. Um, this is Combat Chess from 1997. Um, well, there is one thing I can do to try to even this out a bit. Other than flipping the board and saying, you know, you play the white pieces. Here, let's adjust the strength. Say, it's going to make mistakes all the bloody time. There we go. So I might have some chance of coming back. I don't know how bad these mistakes are going to have to be, but we'll see if it can just manage to lose this somehow. Oh no, it just played a random queen move. Let's take the pawn. Yeah, that's what we were trying to do last game, was promote one of my pawns. Um, and the game crashed before I could get there. Hey look, I took a pawn and you're in check. King G7 you say. Very interesting. So, I think from here I can play F5 and it's kind of scary for black. Although Queen F6 might be scarier. No, F5 is terrifying because I have Bishop H6 as a threat. Um, Plus, if he checks me, I just do king b1, and there's no more checks. Alright, so yeah, that stops my queen g6 threat. Um, but bishop h6 wins a bishop, and is still threatening stuff. f6 is kind of interesting. Queen f6, queen h6. There's a lot of stuff here. Um... Oh, f6 is just winning. Let's play that. Key point is that if king g6, I got queen g8, and that'd be all she wrote. King h8 puts up the most resistance, I think. Um, so key point one was that he couldn't do king g6, right? Note that my bishop covers h6. So point number two is that when I check him, with queen f7, um, he's kind of forced to block. There we go. So this game got a lot easier all of a sudden. Uh, uh, we'll take one of those. Sure, why not? Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Hey, look! It can push the pawn. Alright, let's change the strength back. Turn this back off. None of you saw me do any of that. Oh, well, I apparently can't move the slider back until I check that. And we uncheck that and say, you know, there weren't any mistakes this game. This is a perfect game. No mistakes whatsoever. And let's take a rook. Actually, no. Queen's the only piece that checkmates. I thought rook was going to be beautiful. It's just not. 
Um, ship's kind of funny, but you know, we're taking a queen. We're gonna finish this. And you get checked. And you get checked again. And there's no way out. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, the rook eventually checkmates. Problem is he's got the bishop on f8 just hiding there. So he can block the check. Um, and yeah, sure, I could take the bishop then, and that's fine. But this works. Poor guy had a meltdown. Don't know what happened to him. Such a close game, too. Yeah. You heard that. He regrets his decisions. That's what you get for celebrating early. Alright. We're going to play one more. And this time... We'll put it on full blunder mode from the beginning. And then when I get a large enough advantage, then we'll back off and play a normal game with me being up a rook or two. Oh no, I played a gambit. Whatever will it do? Oh. Wow, the French. How about bishop d3? Here, you don't see that French very often. Isn't this the thing Zug was talking about? I don't remember. Maybe I was paying attention. Maybe I wasn't. Probably wasn't. Um. Uh, can I do knight f3 here? No, I kind of trap my bishop and lose a pawn if I do that. Can I play c4? Um. Is c4 a thing here? I want it to be a thing. So not a thing though. So I have to play c3. All right. It's got. It played the last couple games. It played like the first three or four moves instantly. Here it's playing instantly because I think um, I told it to blunder often. So even after we leave the opening, it's going to be moving instantly for quite a while. Okay. Here. Wait. Can I move my knight there? Yeah, I was pretty sure that was legal. Oh no, I hung my d pawn. Oh, it's not gonna do the queen takes pawn thing. That's too bad. Uh, let's just take e5. That was the most peaceful combat transition ever. Just walks into an opponent and just the opponent just disappears. Without a trace. Uh sure, knight d five for the laughs. Um Let me know if this is book, by the way. I'm pretty sure it isn't. But I could be wrong. If this is some kind of book, I want to know about it. Oh noes, I am in check. Way to let me know that my king is attacked. Instead of trying to do a sneak attack, which would be awesome. Hey look, we're gonna trade bishops. Or you're just gonna go there. And I get to choose which of your pieces I want to take. I think I'll take one of those. Kaboing. Kaboing. Well, I don't know where you went, but that was a feat of dexterity. Alright, knight takes another piece. 
Now, I told it to blunder often. I think it took my words to heart. This is me just getting revenge for that last game. Yeah, that move to C3, I'm like, wait. Uh, okay, sure. And I would take you and be all vengeful and stuff for you playing this ridiculous move, but taking the queen's a little bit better. Okay. Oh, is it going to resign? I mean, if it does resign, then I don't have to crush it. Good. Oh, it played a6. I did not predict a6. Yeah, I get to see all the pieces catch fire. Alright. I think I have a sufficient advantage to... Um, beat the computer now so let's turn that back and see if I can win this now the computer will know what it's like to be defending a position where you think you're struggling it'll finally get some concept of what that struggle is like although more than likely it's just gonna ask can it resign and I suppose I could be merciful and just let it, but where's the fun in that? Wait, why after knight e7 would I play knight c7? Am I that concerned about... No, 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 you're gonna play on, buddy. Um, is his castling so something for me to be that worried about? I guess. I guess that my knight's not doing anything useful, anyhow. Like, if I did knight b6, he does bishop e6. And, yeah, so just stopping castling and developing the knight's a good thing. It makes sense. Check! I'm kind of surprised to want to go to f8. I mean, most humans would want to go chase the knight. Especially if you're down already, you just want to take some risks and live it up a bit. Um, or, yeah, you could just casually stroll into the sunset, um, as Black is doing. Just ride your way off the cliff. My king teleports. Oh, I get it. The king started his move. Then the rook moved over. And the king finishes his move. Okay, so that's not a case of the king moving second. I missed that animation the other time. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, move. Move, move, move. You're not going to make your move any better by sitting and thinking about it. There we go, h6. Such a strong move. Alright, so yeah, as the computer is suggesting, we're just going to tear through this. Oh. Well, that's a unique animation. <laughs> that's funny that it's... The move it's considering there is g7, g6, which just um, opens the king even further. Like, I can then start playing things like e6, and my bishop's hitting the rook. And then after I play e6, I can play f6, and I'm attacking the knight. And I've got, like, two protected passed pawns that are both threatening mate and opening lines for all my other pieces to attack black. Yeah, rook g8 is probably the better way to hole up in this position. Um, f6 is a kind of fun breakthrough move. I'm not sure if it's the right breakthrough. There's all kinds of ways white can break through here. 
I guess the F pawn is attacked. <sighs> Which is bothersome. Um, yeah, F F6 actually makes a ton of sense. We'll take it. I'm not above taking that advice. Note that Bishop H3, I still have um, Knight E1, so it's not like I'm walking into some kind of tactic. Um, or I could maybe even get away with Knight H4, because his forces are so reduced, and anywhere he could attack from, I could go after his king. So, yep, yep, yep. Let's take, oops, did not mean to push there, although it's actually a strong move. I'm actually kind of impressed by that mouse slip. Um, it keeps the king caged in, it keeps the attack roaring, and slows down Black's development. Of what? I don't know. It doesn't have much to develop, but that pawn on e6 is super menacing. Yeah, okay, rook g4 does stop me from playing knight h4. Or does it? Um, I've heard of No Man's Sky. I have no intent of playing it. <laughs> Unless somebody gifts it to me. But, let's be realistic. Um, I don't know. I, th I like the concept. The concept, great. Fantastic concept. Um, but everything other than the concept, I am not impressed about the game. Um, by that I mean the fact that it was marketed as one thing and sold as another. Perfectly legal, maybe, I don't know. Not making any accusations that it's illegal, but... Um, I don't know, I'm just, like, if you look at the trailers, um, not the trailer, if you look at, well, yeah, I guess it was a promotional trailer, they were, um, uh, they showed off months before the official release, um, and then you look at what they actually deployed, it, it just breaks your heart, it's really sad. Taking f6 looks fun, but I want a sack sack mate. There is no sack sack mate against a computer. You just have to take all their things until they get bored and they give you their other things. Um, but yeah, I think the game, at least in its current form, should not be marketed as this is the full game. I mean, you could make a case for maybe this is an early access game and we consider adding all kinds of content to it after it's released and we're going to promise to you that we're eventually going to develop that which we showed you in the trailer. Um, yeah, the concept is incredible, but... Um, be, I mean... It's for the reason that it's incredible that I chose not to pre-order it. Because, truly, you can't believe it. It's just too amazing. Um, Alright. Well, I guess we'll take the exchange and then take your knight. If that's what you want to do. Um, okay, well, let me ask this. Because... The thing that's so amazing about it, like, I surely one of the trailers or something, uh, fine, we'll accept the resignation, be merciful. One of the things that um, is so amazing about this promotion that was made, it's just that it promised so many things that no modern game delivers, and, um, I mean, let me see if I can mute this. Sound, sound, where's my sound? Sound options. Uh, 
Wait, can I not turn off ambient noises? Oh, there we go. Well, I suppose now I have to turn off the music. Or at least turn it down. Uh... <laughs> There we go. Yeah, the, they promised so many things that no modern game has. Um, I don't know what their development force was. As far as I'm concerned, their development team didn't talk to their marketing team. But what do I know? I don't know anything. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about my own profession there, but... Um, because everybody has faults. Um, but just my own perception of what I'm seeing there just screams that what was marketed uh, is light years ahead of uh, what was actually delivered. Um, if you search the internet to s read news articles about the game, you'll find that it's like one of the most refunded games ever. Um, just because players are that discontent with it. And you'll find that in some cases, uh, Steam themselves is allowing players to ask for a refund, even after they've played it for a couple hours and maybe had the game for a week or two. So their Steam is being really forgiving in terms of being able to let people get their money back and return the game. Um... I don't know. I mean, probably. Um, I'm not trying to make it personal for any one person of that effort. And I'm sure people could do that, I just don't care. I care more that the company, just as a group, as an institution, as whoever they are, uh, I guess a corporation, um, just promised one thing. And maybe they delivered on it? I don't know. But the way that it was promised, it looked like so, so much more than it actually is. Um, well, okay, so I'm going to take a break from the chess, and we'll actually segue into that. Um, so if you're here for the chess, thanks for watching. See you around. And let's go digress into uh, No Man's Sky. Um, not that I have the game, but... Uh, we can at least talk about it.